Hi folks, Joey Ricard with TrackSideScenery.com. Welcome back. Yep, this is another vlog video. And in these videos, I'm all over the place with the different projects that I'm doing here in the shop. So from one video to the next, you may not see the same project that I'm working on. And we're going to take a diversion here in a minute. But this is the track plan that I was printing at the end of the last video. And it helps me visualize what I want to do and any changes I may want to make. Oop. Oh, hey, what's that? <laughs> nope, I haven't gone insane. That's another project. You know how we all have pictures of family members in our living room? This cabinet might as well be in my living room because these are like family portraits. One of each of my family members. Over here you got Grandpa, Grandma, and in the middle there is old Aunt Edna. That might as well be Uncle Billy. And this one is little Uncle Eddie. Oh yeah. All of them, I tell you, just like family portraits. Yeah, I know, every now and then I go off on a tangent and do something wacky, but I gotta be honest with you. I miss that old spruce coal and timber layout, and I miss this little box cab, so I want to give him somewhere to run. You see that? It says 8-inch radius track, and no, I have not lost my mind. We're gonna make this work, so let's get started. And yes, that's the same material that our helix components are made of. This one's just going to be a little tighter. We covered the whole ON30 versus HO gauge deal in a previous video here on the channel. So if you need clarification, check that out. Also, keep in mind that this is not a how-to video. It's just a vlog showing what I'm doing. Look at that works just like a slinky. Now there's probably some kid watching this going, Mommy, what's a slinky? And there it is all put together with super glue and ready to devour its first victim. Ah, must be a testament to good track work because that little sucker right there has a tendency to derail on just about anything. Yeah, I know when you watch these videos, you probably think I have this grand plan, and the truth is I don't. I just go with the flow. But there you have it. This is the moment that I decided to actually make it into a little layout other than a small helix. Up until now, I don't know, maybe I was going to set it on my desk and put a ramp at the bottom and run it like a Hot Wheels track. But things change. For inquiring minds, yes, I cut those ties out on the laser but I ran out of those pesky little spikes. I thought I had more, but I didn't. We've arrived at the part of the video where people start scratching their head, wondering what the heck I'm doing. As I've mentioned in a lot of previous videos, sometimes you have to think outside the box, and it's unfortunate that they don't sell a helix holder downer bracket. And when I say they, I don't mean us, because everybody has a different way of doing things. So are you that guy watching this video right now saying it's not going to work? That's right, Mr. Naysayer. Almost every helix that you've seen on this channel thus far was attached to a base just like this. The N scale, the HO scale, the O scale, and now this thing. Yeah, Joey, in theory it may work, but is it strong enough? I don't know. You tell me. If this thing is going to be a little mini layout, it looks like it has a lower level, so we're going to have to give it an upper level. At this point, my newly hatched plan was to hand lay the track on all visible portions of the layout, but as I mentioned, I ran out of spikes. Luckily, I found some old ON30 flex track. It is used, but it'll work for what we're doing just to get this finished in time for the video. If you want my professional opinion, today's ON30 flex track looks just as good as hand laid. And proof is in the pudding because I used both methods on the spruce coal and timber layout and nobody knew the difference. Ladies and gentlemen, let's get ready to break some trains! 
I guess I could have mentioned earlier that I'm using our HO scale risers. These are the HO standard risers and they rise about a little over three and a half inches railhead to railhead per loop. <laughs> All right, let's take a poll. How many viewers watching this video right now hope that this thing falls off the rails and I look like an idiot? Go ahead, let me know. You're not going to hurt my feelings. Okay, the truth is I tested it a couple times before I shot the video. And that's only because these finicky little cars are so prone to derailing on almost anything. I figured those were going to be a worst case scenario. And the truth is they never derailed. And I was surprised but happy. But what about other rolling stock? How's that going to play out? We're going to find out in just a minute. If you've been watching our channel for any length of time, you may remember these little guys. They were used on the original Spruce Cole and Timber Mini layout. As you can see, those trucks are not going to clear the coupler pocket, so we're either going to have to trim that down, change it, or use Lincoln pin couplers. And it's the same situation for this little log car, but I really like these things and I do want to run them on this layout. All right, check this one out. I think this might have been a kit bash because I don't think it came from the factory that way. But the wheels swing and they clear the coupler, so let's give it a try. A day earlier when I designed these deck sections on the computer, I had no intention of running cars of this length. So to be fair, I had to trim some of the risers on the outside just to give it a little bit of clearance for that swing. I will say it is impressive for what it is. And getting that box car up that helix is a triumph. So this triumph is going to be dedicated to the guy that said he was going to unsubscribe from my channel because I wasn't doing ON30 anymore. No matter which way you slice it, this channel is a model railroading channel and we cover all scales and all facets of the hobby. 8 inch radius versus HO scale Bachman Jeep. Am I out of my mind? All right, we're taking bets. Is there anybody out there that thinks this Jeep is not going to make it up that 8 inch radius helix? Now I'm not saying that Jeep's going to pull a 20 car train up that hill, but it is nice to see. Well, there's proof right there that you could make this thing into an HO layout if you wanted to. Or that thing would make a great chassis donor for an ON30 critter. Hey, it may not be your thing, but it is fun, it is interesting, and it is model railroading. Be sure to subscribe, stay tuned, and share the hobby. Doreen Ricard with TracksideScenery.com. Thanks for watching. See you next time.